really helped us cement our understanding with uh, recipes. And uh, despite all her best efforts, I don't consider myself a great recipe illustrator. But uh, uh, we have definitely touched on so many food items, so many of them, that um, I'm quite certain whatever we take our individual food illustrations to, it becomes very interesting to apply it at different places other than just re recipe illustration. Okay, so we've done recipe illustration. We've done all sorts of uh, high level detailed art. Like last time was a strawberry, right? I mean, that was like so much. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> that that was was just, just the one strawberry and dipped in chocolate alone took a class. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, and the, I was the, watching the recording uh, and she didn't finish the entire strawberry. She finished only the chocolate part by the end of the class. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I have to do this red thing by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, it took that much understanding. Oh, my God. And patience <laughs> to do just yeah. that chocolate part. But huge tracks of which were white anyway. <laughs> That's the thing, no? What I ah. like is that we can take we can take things that Aditi will give you the same strawberry and do it in, in five minutes. Yeah. So we can say, take the same same subject and apply to it whatever detail we want to within the time frame we have we have and still come out with an illustration. And neither the five minute illustration nor the one hour, one and a half hour illustration um is bad or you can't you can't even you can't compare them. That's the that's the funny part of it. They are they appeal in their own ways, and uh, and that's what I love about uh, illustrating. In fact, in, in in general, you can do it the way you want, and it has its own appeal. So today, what we'll do is we'll do some fun snacks. And today, I thought uh, nothing like Indian snacks. I mean, I I've gone and looked at uh, at uh, European snacks and continental food and stuff like that, but they are good. Pastries are great. We we in fact last class we did a lot of breads and things like that. But there is something about Indian snacks that we just love. You see it and your mouth waters, right? So when you see those reference photos only, you're like, oh, wow, this is so good. So if the reference photos are so good, I'm telling you, what we, whatever we try with it today is going to be great fun. Okay. But today, we'll use those reference photos to create a menu. Okay. So we've not done menus. I don't think we've done menus in the past, right? So I thought, why not take the opportunity to? Uh, it is the it is quite similar to recipe illustration because we are going to uh, the layout of things is going to be quite the same. The difference is just that we are not going to have ingredients and things like that. That's the detail that's not going to be there. It's not going to have too much of. Uh, uh, it's not. I won't say it's not going to have too much text. It will have text depending on how many items you have, but uh, it has a uh, more or less a format. Okay, so that's what we're going to consider the layout of all the items you want to put on our menu and then the placement of all the, um, the components of that menu. So since we are doing like Indian stacks today, I picked up Indian stacks because we identify with these things more easily. And uh, when we are illustrating them and putting paint to them, we are going to enjoy the process because we know what those colors are and we know what we want to try and do as decorative elements. I was talking to Alka yesterday, but decorative elements are very important. Now, in many of our snacks, we have brownish snacks mm -hmm. in the case, in most cases. So look at all our snacks. Everything is fried in oil and most of them have a batter coating or some sort of a coating, which eventually turns brown when we fry them. So if you look at all the snacks together and huddle them all together in one page, you're going to get a mass of brown, which is very similar to when we have breads also, right? When we have different breads, it's basically a huge uh, pile of browns. So how do we demarcate these browns? Uh, how do we separate them? How do we bring out each one's goodness by having extra elements? So that's what we want to be very creative about. The creativity is there in, in separating these brown elements, even for that matter, our beverages. Um, I've shared three beverages, tea, coffee. Oh, my bandwidth is low. One minute. Sometimes I wonder, just give me one moment, I'll, huh, okay, yeah, so even our beverages, we have, I have uh, brought in chai, 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 what we call cutting chai, 
and then I have brought in filter copy, which is like just another brown, okay? A warmer brown and a cooler brown, not much different. And then I brought in the element of green tea just so that we could have one more color, okay? And green tea, even though it's not really green, it's more yellow, we still have another shade, at least another shade. So I brought in three beverages that way. I brought all the snacks, which are all brown. Nothing is, uh, uh, the difference is Dokla. I included Dokla only because it was yellow. Okay. And uh, Meduvada, uh, your samosa, all of it is brown. And then we have desserts. So in desserts, what I decided to do was, uh, I picked up um, kulfi. Now kulfi, again, India has all sorts, all varieties. But if I go with your standard Malai kulfi or Kesar kulfi, we are again back in the yellow bracket. So I thought, let's do something different. Let's try maybe a pink kulfi, so rose kulfi. So these are the kind of ways in which you can think up uh, of making that page slightly different here and there, and thereby bringing some um, some uh, fun to the uh, the color spectrum. Okay. So uh, before we start, I just want to tell you that in a menu, if you've looked at any menu, and now when you say menu, all menus don't have to have. They, it depends on the occasion for which a menu is created. If you're creating a menu for a restaurant, you will need to have price written at one side uh, adjacent to the item. So next to the item, there is a price tag. So if you're making a menu for a restaurant or for an occasion, so for example, you're having a sale or you're having a, um, a, a I don't know, a, a, a something, any sort of a canteen, a cafeteria, whatever. If you're having something like that, a menu will have to have items plus uh, plus um, uh, prices against. If you're making a menu for an event, now for example, uh, in the West, this is more uh, popular than in India, but for a wedding, you will almost, you know, you'll always almost sit at a table des designated where you are, your seat is designated for you. And then you will be given a menu. So the items that will be first appear in your starter, then in your main course, then whatever is post main course, I don't even know the breakup of all the items that you have in a full meal and then dessert and all that. So now this menu could also be for an occasion like that, in which case you do not have price prices anywhere. You only have the item. And the other thing you will notice in that kind of a menu is you do not have many options. It is not a selection process. You are being just being told that in main course, you have these two things which will be given to you. And in dessert, you have this one thing that will be given to you. So usually you will have one or two items under each category, okay? And then there is, of course, a menu just to tell you that these are the items out here displayed, okay? So I may be having a counter, which is not for sale. This is just like, so you know, for information. I have all these items prepared here. And since you'd like to know the name, here are the names. So that is also a menu, which does not have a price uh, put on against it. So keep that, keeping that in mind, uh, okay. we have to remember that uh, we have to accommodate for the space accordingly. That's all. Okay. So uh, uh, in a menu, you may have sections, just like in a recipe. A recipe usually has uh, ingredients and method or any other prep and things like that. In a menu, we will have sections depending on whether the food has been categorized. So in our case today, we are going to have some snacks. We are going to have some beverages and we are going to have some dessert. So we have, I mean, I have pre-decided three sections, but if this is a menu for an occasion, you may have uh, the sections divided as starters, main course, stuff like that, okay? Now, why I'm talking about these sections is because the title of the menu and then the section headers will need to follow some kind of a format in the, some kind of consistency in the lettering. So we just need to keep that in mind and bear that in mind before we illustrate. So title, I'm just showing you two considerations. One is your title of the menu. And then you have the sections. And then you have the items. So these are the three. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. That's right. Okay. So um, 
these are the three main things we have to consider. Uh, if you observe menus in uh, on Pinterest and things like that, uh, many are very, very, um, what do we call it? Um, they're very, uh, they have a lot of running hand. And that's what I like about menus actually. Unlike restaurants where everything is printed text, in a handmade or illustrated menu, we have a lot of running hand. And running hand, uh, even though some of us may not have the best handwriting, it is not difficult to follow a cursive approach to writing. Okay, so if we decide that the items and what I would normally uh, do is club the title and the section headings in one font and leave the items in another font. Why? Because visually, when you look at it, the items stand out or the titles stand out, whichever way, uh, and you can make out the difference very fast. Okay, so one one of two things you can either choose to make the title uh, the items in a in running hand. Okay, or I will write away a running hand. And these could be in, um, in uppercase, okay? But this is not set in stone. I have seen plenty of menus where the detail is actually, the items are actually in, in um, title case, but small title case. And the the sections are beautifully, uh, em, you know, uh, uh, beautifully written out in running hand, and not just running hand. Maybe even some four calligraphy, all sorts of things. Okay, so this is interchangeable. But the point is that whatever you're using for one should be quite different from the other, so that it is visibly, um, is it, it is visibly demarcated. Okay, so let me show you an example. Something like, suppose we have running hand for menu. I'm doing four calligraphy here. Susan, we can't see what you're doing. Are we supposed to? Okay, I didn't pin it. No, it, because we were, at least I have a green screen. I can see, Alka. Yeah, I have uh, Oh. Spotlight. Why uh, is it I can't see? Do one thing, go to my, uh, this thing, um, can you go to my uh, screen, the screen with the this thing? Can you see everybody's screens? And yeah. then pin my pin my my um, paper, the book book, the screen with my book at your end. Oh, I so the gallery that. view. Welcome. Ah, you must be in some other view. Correct. I'm Are you in the speaker, speaker view? Do I have to go to gallery view? Okay, so now I have gallery view and your thing is showing as a green screen. You are going oh, to wow. speaker view. I'm talking through one. one oh, okay, uh, now I can see. You must have gone to an uh, active speaker view. That's why. What do you have in work now? No, I, now it's gallery is fixed. It's strange, whatever. Okay. <laughs> but you can see this? Yeah, now I can see it. You can see it. Okay, perfect. So I'm just showing you an example of four calligraphy to just write out the word menu. And this is something that you can test out uh, any way you want. Suppose we decide to go with a, a running hand like this. And let's say you want uh, under this menu, you want to continue with the same running hand. You want to write starters. Okay. So I'm just going to try the word starters. But this time my starters will be a little smaller than the, the word menu itself. Experiment with this beforehand so that you can identify which lettering you want to, which lettering style you want to take forward into the menu. Okay. This will help you by because placement of letters uh, and words should not affect your illustration. So this is my starters and under starters, I will write, um, okay, we are having samosa. So let me try just normal capital letters. Write a few items down and see whether you are you like the lettering that you are choosing. Does this look good to you? Okay. Conversely, if you don't 
if you don't think you want to do this, you would like the other way around. Uh, you can do that. Now let's let's assume we are trying capitals for the starters. Okay, so let's try this. So this is my These are not very difficult huh, to do. Uh, by the way, uh, Malika, if you are not sure how to do this lettering, it's very simple. Take a pencil, write the alphabet as a capital letter. Okay. So this is your R, correct? I'll just uh, zoom in a bit. You can see. Okay. This is how I would write an R. Sorry, it's a little wonky. Write your letter in pencil and simply go around that letter like this. And that will give you what we are trying to see. Okay. Now, I, I went ahead thinking uh, directly with this because most of us have done this. But if you were wondering, this is how we do it. After a while, what will happen is you will not need that pencil mark, okay? You will not need that uh, skeletal structure of the letter. You will be directly able to draw the outline and get your proportion right. So if you, if initially you need to write it in capitals and in pencil, please go ahead and do that, okay? Don't worry about it. I'm going ahead and doing it without because we have over the years learned to do it. And still, by the way, we may not get our proportions right and don't worry. That will come with in time. So let me try starters this way. What is going to happen is in our heads very often we see something and we it appeals to us, but it may not be practically. Sorry. Oh, oh sorry, 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 sorry. My so that's fine. That's fine. So it it may look very nice, honestly, but what's going to happen is then now I'm going to try running hand for the items. Okay. So let's say I want to do. What is the third item we have? Uh, samosa, vada pav, uh, pakodas. We have pakodas. Okay. Now this is also a nice, if you ask me, a nice way to have a menu. You can do this. But the only thing that I personally would do, probably not do this, is because I want the individual items. Now, starters is okay. If someone would, was not able to read my lettering easily for the for the for the word starters, doesn't bother me as much as someone has to make an effort to read samosa, vada pav, pakodas because those are my individual items. So, just thinking from that point of view, where I want someone to just read the items quickly, it may work out better if we wrote them in uh, in um, uh, capitals this way. And left the beautiful hand lettering for the, the sections and for the menu. You see what I mean? Now that is a call you can make. It is not set in stone. If you feel this looks good, that's perfectly fine. That way also the menu will look good. Right? So test out a few lettering options before you decide how you want to uh, uh, illustrate your menu. That's the important point. The point I'm getting to was just that that you need to test out your font or the two fonts at least. If you want to have a third font, there's nothing wrong. Starters could be in another font. Okay, so that could be fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But at least two fonts is important. Okay, that's one thing to test out. The next thing we have to definitely uh, keep in mind is the number of items we have. So now just writing it out in pencil, we have, uh, like I said, Snacks, okay. Our sections now for today will be snacks, uh, beverages, and sweets. 
you could call this desserts. Uh, but since this is more a snacky affair, I thought just leave it as sweets. For a dinner, you could call it like a dinner menu, we could call it a dessert. Okay. So under snacks, we have, let's say we are having samosa. We are having dhokla. Uh, then we are having vada pav. We are having pakoras. What else? What other items did I have in my list? Anything else? How did we? Medu vada. Ah, yeah. Medu vada. I was trying to be fair to all regions, huh, to be honest. North, South, everybody. Mumbai girls, of course, without. So, um, so we have these many items, five items in stacks. In beverages, we have chai. We have um, filter coffee. Okay, I'm going to go one step further and say filter coffee. And I'm going to say green tea. Okay. In sweets, at the moment, I only I've only shared kulfi. <coughs> <clears throat> but other sweet options are possible. For example, uh, ladoos. Okay? Not too heavy and okay for an occasion that is with snacks. So, ladoos are okay. Any of your um, sweets, Indian sweets are actually quite alright. You want to have a gulab jamun. Gulab jamun is an option. Uh, pedas are an option. Whatever. Okay? Now, we'll leave that. Right now, I'm going to just st stick to these many because I think this is enough. I want the snacks to be the most and then beverages three and sweets two. This is important why? because in our menu, we will need to assign space for this. If I'm going with this particular lettering, remember we are going to have star um, snacks and then one, two, three, four, five. So that's about this much width, this much space on the menu. Followed by beverages, which is going to be maybe about this much, and sweets, which is going to be like this. So keep that in mind now before we illustrate what we are going to, uh, the menu that we are going to make. What I would recommend is now for this page, if you have done it the way I've done it on the left side, just fold your page in half. And uh, what happens with that is we have half a page that is left for us to create this menu. Can you see my page entirely? I've just folded it in half so I get an A5 section. And let's make our menu here in this A5 section. Yeah, okay. We will also have to test a few colors when we are putting uh, down certain uh, certain illustrations when you are trying to uh, paint them. But uh, let's put those testing colors here as well in on the left side. Okay, here let's make it R. Today's menu, we can try and illustrate it with the uh, fine liner. So I have here a size. Actually, I have very few fine liners with me right now. Do you, do you all have fine liners? Yeah. Fine liner pins. <coughs> so, um, this is a 0.5 that I have. I don't, unfortunately, have a 0.2 or 0.3 with me at the moment. So, I'm going to have to do with 0.5. But if you feel you want to do with a 0.3, please go ahead and take a 0.3. The line would be a little less um, thick. Okay. But since I don't have a 0.3, I'm going to have to do with this 0.5, okay? It won't make a, a world of a difference. Your illustration will still be quite pretty. Just that mine will be a little thicker. Okay. Now we take a pencil and mark out what we want to. Now, what would we like as the title? Okay. Would you want to say just menu? Would you want to say um, so-and-so's menu? Sometimes what happens is it's a counter. So you may want to write my menu, right? So we could do that. We could make it something like uh, your name. Put your name to it and menu, okay? In which case you want that to be nice and bold on top. So let's say you want to write Susan's menu. And in your case, if you're writing your name, right, replace that with your name. But this is what you want to do. You want to have some fancy lettering here like this like a banner, 
Okay, like this. The banners are very simple. They are excellent motifs to um, uh, to use in things like menus and banners. Okay. I will illustrate this one more time. I know Malika probably has not uh, done a banner before, but it's very, very simple, Malika. You just have to, um, basically, you have to form the first, uh, the main portion of the banner as two parallel lines. Parallel, curved lines, if they are curved lines, curved. If they are uh, straight lines, straight. But whatever it is, they have to be parallel to each other. Okay? So I'm going to show you what it looks like. See? Okay? I'll just very simply draw this one more time and maybe in pen on this sheet of paper. So you can just, uh, a banner can take any any type, any any shape. That's the good thing about a banner. So suppose you are drawing a banner that is curvy. It can be curvy from the top down or down to up, whatever way you like. Okay. So if I want to do it the other way, now since I've done it, uh, this is your first line. Make sure that you leave sufficient space for the lettering you want to put in and draw a parallel curve. Okay. Similarly, if you don't want to have a curve, you can even have two absolutely parallel lines, straight parallel, lines, whatever works for you. Okay. Then you close off these parallel lines. I'm giving you two examples. You can pick whatever you like. And then the end of your banner is very often a, um, uh, you know, like a ribbon. Okay. You can choose to have the cut, the V cut at the end of it. Or you can choose not to have it also. So let me show you one example where there is a V cut. Where there is a V cut, make sure that that also is parallel to the end that you are addressing. So for example, if, if, if this is a low end, technically... It would be nice to have a V cut over here. See, I mean, uh, uh, end over here. See, it's parallel to the shape that you have uh, already drawn. Okay. And this is from behind. So keep the, the line joined here. The height of this piece has to be more or less equal to this, which means this is how high you got. That means this is how high it will be the end at the end. So there to draw a parallel line. Okay. And then simply put a V shape like this. Yeah. We're doing the same thing on the other side. I'm going to draw an extension of this shape. And as high as it is over here, or as I'm doing it on the opposite side, by the way. Now I'm doing it on the opposite side. Okay. I do it that way. I will also draw a parallel line here. And then my V cut. And of course, my straight line. Now, this may look complete to you, but it's missing a key feature or a key line that actually joins it to the sheet in front. And that is here. This connection. Okay. So, this connection is what makes it join to the shape that you have drawn. Okay. Same thing can be done here. And this is going to be a banner which is not like, not um, not beautified the way we have beautified it here. Like a, this looks like a ribbon. This looks more like a wooden piece of, uh, or rather a firmer material. Okay. Now here I'm only showing you, I've put it on both on the same side. I've put no, um, no V cuts on either side. Okay. I've simply made it very, very straightforward. And this is another style. And this is also fine. This will work also in certain places. So basically, banner drawing is real, real easy. It follows similar rules. And you do what you want according to your... I'm going to draw this banner here. And I would like to use this as... Um, I would like to say Susan's menu, or if it, in your case, you would write your individual names. 
So my, my name would come here. Now this is another problem. The problem here is that you will not see the you will not see the center of the banner immediately. So probably the best thing to do is find the center most alphabet of your name and start backwards or start from the middle. You just, I don't like to use the eraser, but I have to show this correctly. So this is my center and the middle uh, alphabet in my name is S. Uh, yeah. So I put the S there and then it is easier for me to space out the other letters. But do this according to your name. Oh, wait, wait. We have an extra S to factor. So there you go. There's the first mistake. I It is Susan's menu or whoever, Alka's menu or anyone's menu. So what is going to happen is you have an extra S. So it's S-U-S-A-N-S, -S, right? which means three letters are going to fall on the uh, on one side of the middle line and three letters on the other side. Now, Malika, in your case, it's a bigger uh, name. So you are going to have to write in a thinner font. That's one option. Or the other option is make your banner wide. Okay. So if you want to make your banner nice and big enough to accommodate your name and not make any any, do not scrunch up your alphabets. Make sure that your banner is nice and wide. So now this is a wider banner than this. Over here, I can easily fit your name better. And let the alphabets move according to the, according to the uh, curve of the banner. So widen the banner and let your name be as prominent as it should be, okay? This adjustment is something you can make, okay? Then the next word is menu, and we are going to use um, folk calligraphy. Uh, everyone is familiar with folk calligraphy? No, Malika? Okay, so I'll tell you what folk calligraphy is. In lettering, when we are lettering, uh, uh, when we're using something as simple as cursive, like cursive, very similar to cursive, we write our alphabet slowly and then join one alphabet into the other. Okay, so for example, this is a simple A, correct? In cursive. This is a simple B, okay? You can take these very same alphabets and add a thickness on certain sides. On every downstroke, the whole point is that every time your pencil goes down, that's called a downstroke. When you're writing a letter, every time your pencil goes down, it's called a downstroke. So at every downstroke, you can put a double line. Okay. So now, for example, look at this B. B, my letter starts this way. I go up and then I come down here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add a thickness only till here. Then I go up. So no thickness there. And then I come down here. Again, it's coming down. So I add a thickness. I add a double line here. This is called faux calligraphy. Why? Because when we use a calligraphic uh, uh, a dip pen in faux calligraphy, every downstroke we press. And when we press, that stroke becomes thick. Yeah. But in a, in a pointed pen, we have no such option to show a thickness. Because you press or you don't press, you get a single line. So faux calligraphy is basically imagining the thickness. Imagining the thickness by adding a double line. So let me show you a D. Now this is D for you. This is normal D. Okay. What I will do is I will remember that my downstroke is here and my downstroke is here. See? And there you get four calligraphy. Okay. So there is really nothing to worry about. Write your letter out in normal letter, normal cursive writing and then add the thickness on the downstroke. So now Susan's menu, I'm going to write M. E. N. U. Okay. And I'm adding all the downstrokes. Thickness to all the downstrokes. 
then that's it. You've got four calligraphy. Yeah. Now the main placement is done. Let's get on to the. Now we want to have starters. No, not starters. Sorry. Snacks. One, two, three, four, five. Roughly each um, letter height is about. I'm just measuring. Huh? Okay, about six. Yeah, something like six mm. Okay. So we can, and what, 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 my lettering should also be not very big. So my four calligraphy is coming to about one, one uh, centimeter. Okay. So let's draw a vertical line here, a horizontal line here, perfectly horizontal line. Huh? Let's measure out about one centimeter. This gives us the space to write starter. One centimeter to write the word starters. Oh, not starters, snacks. Oh, snacks, sorry. Then we are going to have to keep about half an inch spacing. And then we want about 6 mm, okay? 6 mm for all our uh, individual items. And we have how many items? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 items. So let's do one thing. Let's keep 6 mm plus um, the gap. The gap is about what? 2 mm, 3 mm, 6 mm, and 3 mm, 9 mm. Okay. So let's keep a total of about. I'm trying to think whether we should leave, uh, we should put the individual marks. Probably should. Okay. Let's it's easier let... to write if we have the line, no? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm thinking we we'll, let's let's calculate and do that. Okay, let's put a gap of three mm, and then give ourselves uh, six mm, and then again three mm, and then six mm. Okay. If you want to make your lettering a little bigger and then just do this all in in. Uh, you know, in multiples of fives and all, please go ahead and do that, okay? Don't have to make life so uh, uncomfortably difficult. Maybe I'll just do that because it's getting, it's going to get very, very tedious. So let me do it this way. Let me make it uh, 6mm and 4mm, okay? Gap between is going to be 4mm. And the letter height is going to be 6 mm. Okay. So see what I'm doing? 4 on the top, 6 at the bottom. 4 on the top, 6 at the bottom. That way, 1, 1, 1, 1 centimeter gets done. Okay. 4 at the top, 6 at the bottom. So we have now 1, 2, 3 lines. 4 at the top, 4, and 5. How many items? 6 items? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 items. 5 items. Let me quickly do it on the other side also because I fully expect to draw lines. But I think I'm drawing them horizontal. But from the angle I'm sitting at, after I draw all the lines, I will be erasing all the lines. There you go. So now you can put your guidelines very gently. Huh? Let's not make it very dark because eventually we'll have to run a um, needable eraser over it. So now when you draw these lines, we suddenly realize how much space is going already going away. 
So there it is. Your snacks have taken up already this much space on your menu. Yeah. Okay. Next is we have beverages and we have sweets. So let's uh, let's leave uh, a full inch before we start beverages. A full cent sorry not inch centimeter my mistake centimeter okay a full centimeter and then we start a header for sorry we need a one one full centimeter for the title section title and what else do we need then we maintain the four by six by four by six, which is one, two, three, three items or three items. Four, six, four, four. Yeah. Do the same thing here. Four. Now, you will notice that uh, I am now maintaining the lines a little bit on the right side. You know why I'm doing this? Because I'm considering it as letters written on, I mean, one set of items here, and then probably move a little bit to the right and have your, you know, your beverages, and then come back a little bit to the left for snacks. We're just kind of moving the sections also to allow all our illustrations to come on different sides. Okay. If you do that, what will happen is you save yourself a lot of this extra erasing of lines because you're only keeping the lines in the area that you are going to write. Write in. Lines looking wonky. Ready? And that will also happen, uh, by the way. Okay, last section. Leave a full gap. We have one, and we have, we are already running out of space. So we have a section for desserts or sweets. And four and six. And you know what? Maybe only just, only one dessert. Leave it. <laughs> so these are the adjustments. This is why I'm telling you, before we illustrate, we need to know. Because placement is going to go a little off. Okay. So not to worry. We leave it at one dessert. Let's only have full food. For, just for this experiment. You, uh, don't, uh, don't worry yourself about um, not being able to make it at all. You can make it. There is no restriction. You can just realign everything. Right. You can make it if you want to add one more element. There's no problem. Okay, so I have only one item now in this section. It's like my page is really getting wonky. Despite measuring and drawing, huh? okay. Done. This is done. So this has allowed us to plan our lettering. And with pencil, you can choose to go in and write out the lettering in pencil and then write over it eventually in uh, in our uh, file line. Okay. If you are um, confident, go ahead and do it directly. See, I, I, I absolutely don't, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm all for trying it out straight away because that's how we get into confident mode. Okay, that mode where we are not second guessing ourselves and then erasing too much, things like that. So if you want to do this in pencil, please do it in pencil if it makes you comfortable. But uh, if you do it in pen, you'll just, you'll just have that confidence from the very beginning. Okay, so it's okay if it goes off. It's a handmade menu. So there's really not much you have to worry about. Okay, all right. So I'm going to start with um, starters. And for starters, I'm going to use 
um, I'm going to use my um, what is it? This what is this? Uh, four calligraphy, four calligraphy. Okay. Let me first ink this part. I can leave the Susans for directly lettering in uh, paint. So let me be, I will do that. I could leave it. Why, why illustrate it in, um, in, in pen? I'm going to leave it. Just a thought that occurred to me that maybe with just paint directly, it would look nice. So then shall we, because uh, I'm just wondering, shall we illustrate the illustration first? So we know how much space probably, you know, we have for lettering, whether we can make the letter big or small. No, we, can, or... We, we can do that. So that's what, that's what I'm saying. So if you feel that you want to just write it out in pencil and then illustrate, no problem. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just saving myself some this thing. Because now in a menu, what's happening is, uh, ideally, we want to see the words at any cost. Then the illustration has to fit around whatever we have already written. That is why we can, we can actually go ahead and write it out and illustrate on top, in the gaps, in the spaces, those kind of things. Okay. But... Okay. Like you said, there is no, there is no other thing. What will happen if we illustrate directly in ink or whatever? We do the ink illustration first and then the writing is that we may run out of space to write. And then uh, our words will become uneven. And when they become uneven, it becomes very clear to the eye that it has become something has gone wrong. Yeah, just so gone wrong. Yeah. But if we adjust the illustration, that will not seem that way. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so instead of, instead of three quarters of my samosa coming in, only half my samosa came in. It will not look like a mistake. It will look like it was part of the illustration, mm -hmm. right? So that is why I was thinking we'll put the letters first because this is a menu. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Please write your own names wherever you think so that. It's always good to, I know this is not your snack. Uh, this is uh, imposed on you snacks, but I'm sure you will be able to enjoy it just as well. So here I have starters. Now I'm going to write. Not startups. My 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 mistake. Snacks. I don't know because I had so many things happening. No, sometimes you forget. Snacks, not startups. And on the snacks I have, okay, let's just check out the items. They have to be one below the other, samosa. There is no rule that every item in your menu has to be illustrated. That's another consideration we have to make. Where we have space, we will try and illustrate whatever we have. But the menu doesn't need to have every single item. Now, if I have 28 items, all 28 have to be in my menu. Not at all. If you look at menus, in fact, you will find sometimes menus which have only one picture for the entire section. So, if I'm, so for example, I know a menu where I have like 10 different pizzas, but I have just one pizza uh, illustration. That's it. Right? So, we are doing a menu which has more items, but it's not required. Not required. You could do a single, large, very complicated illustration at the side and that. That also would be fine. Samosa, then we have uh, Edu Vada. I'm writing it in, in somewhat thin lettering because I don't want it to take up too much of space. Edu Vada. 
वड़ापाव पकोड़ा The next section is beverages. So I'm going to write it here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to align the beverages to a, a line over here. Somewhere here. Rough, rough line. Just a guide for me. Eh? So that all my uh, this thing adheres to this question. Okay, I'm going to write beverages in this space. Okay, so this is your downstroke. Beverage. Beverage spelling is B-E-V-A-R, right? Sometimes, no, my English fails me. It's B-E-V-A-R. Happens to me often in lettering. Bever. Oh, B-E-V-A-R. Look at that. See? See it? You know what it's like. E, right? Not E. What is it's it? not A, it's not A. Oh my God. I thought I made a mistake. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying, no? You see it and you know it's correct, but when you write it, you're not entirely sure. And here we're going to have Cutting chai. Filter coffee. And um, green tea. If you use Aditi's lettering book, by the way, you will get so many more lettering styles. So please use that as a reference because then you can do even more fancy fonts and things like that. So please definitely check it out. Full of ideas. And lastly, we want to align back with this where we have kulfi and that is for sweets. So sweets. And we have um, kulfi. So we can even write rose kulfi. Since we are drawing a rose kulfi. That's up to you. If you want to leave it as just kulfi, that's fine. So these are our main components and we want everyone to see this. Okay. Now we can do our magic with the illustration. Okay. So if you look at our illustrations, we have the ones that I've shared with you. Hi, could I please have the images? Oh, 
you're not on the group, uh, Malika? No, 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 I'm not on the group. You're not on the group? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Let you me uh, send me your number. Yes, I'm looking just chat there. There it is. You've sent it to me on the chat? Yeah, thanks. Yes. I'll just send it to you on the chat. Malika? I think I got it. Yeah. Okay. So let's consider um, starting off with the samosa. Okay, samosa is definitely very, very interesting to illustrate. Okay. So if you're looking at the samosa that I have here, so for example, samosa here, right? It's, it's, it's on the group. You can look at your own uh, image when you want. Let's try and fit our samosa in this space. Okay. Now, what is important here when you have many elements and you're going to overlap is you have to decide which ones you want in the forefront and which ones at the back. Okay. So I would like to have samosa in the forefront. Okay, so I would definitely uh, then in that case illustrate the samosa first, and then behind the samosa I will put some other elements. Like for example, I think maybe the, the pakodas could be behind, or the meduada could be behind. Now meduada also see, samosa meduada both are brown colored. So when we are drawing the meduada, it would be nice to draw the meduada with the leaf, banana leaf. Okay. And like, like Alka was saying, to add that color, maybe that extra chutneys would really be handy to have, okay? So that breaks away from the brown. We can have a coconut chutney. We can have uh, for the samosa, we can even have the green chutney. I think the samosa had a green chutney next to it. Okay? No, it didn't have. Okay, it didn't have. But we can always draw a green chutney next to it, okay? So these kind of things, let's just keep that in mind. So first, let me start with the samosa. I'm going to directly go in pen. I'm not going to worry about the line or worry about the uh, the the uh, what is going to happen to uh, my line. Don't worry. This is an illustration. This is a hand illustration. You're going to be fine. Roughly, this is the size of my samosa, which means my meduvadas will sit somewhere here. My dokla may sit here. My tea will sit here. I could even have something on this portion over here. We need yeah. to write the prices. Ah, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Otherwise, you won't have to write yes. the prices. You're right, you're right. Yeah, this is, I forgot this is the, we are using this as a. So let's draw a little space here. Okay. This is, oh, this is coming too much to the edge. Okay. Let's put them right next to it with a small gap because what's happening here, let's put the beverages first, okay? Because the beverages are coming quite close to the end. Uh, one, let me see how to work with it. So the beverages you can put the right on the other side, no? It could, but you know, visually we see the name 
followed by and the, the price okay yeah so yeah. Uh, keeping that okay. in yeah. mind yeah it would uh, kind of affect how we read readability is affected so let's let's try and fit it here only although it's, it is a tight squeeze uh What is cutting charge these days? 10 bucks? 15 bucks? 10, huh? Okay, let's make it. Samosa is 40, I know. Okay. How let's... much is it in Delhi, Ritika? Samosa? Huh? Uh, I think the same. Not 40, but at least 25. Okay. Okay, I know okay. Pitta coffee is expensive, so I'm going to keep well, it. Well, Gappa would be. <laughs> I think Golgappa one plate is gonna be eighty now. Really? <laughs> wow. Wow. Then we are definitely cheap. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I think Vada Pao is also about twenty now, right? I do get fifteen, huh? You get fifteen? Okay. Mm, some places. Yeah. Depends, huh? Establishment costs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so I've put in some values here, and I'm going to kind of maintain that kind of space here. Meaning, my Meduvada is going to be the closest. But what I, because I ordered very recently, was Ras Malai. It was 50 rupees per piece now. Really? Wow. I mean, we had guests and we thought, okay, let's order 20 Ras Malais, you know. My we, goodness. And they were like, okay, 1,000 rupees for the Ras <laughs> Oh, my, that is quite a bit, huh? Yeah, I was just shocked when I had okay 50 rupees for one piece. He's asking. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot now. Yeah. 30 rupees plate is what I last checked. <laughs> but uh, per plate, I'm not going to write. I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah. Dokla is what now? Come on. I've not bought Dokla only. What samosa is how much? What did we say? 40. 40, no? Okay. And Dokla, we'll, shall we put a fictitious amount? Yeah. 35? Mm. Reasonable? Would you buy Dokla for 35? Yeah. I'm just wondering, I mean, when we used to go to college and, you know, <laughs> we used to get 50 rupees as a pocket money. I know. Lot and 10 rupees, even 10 rupees bought you so much, yeah. so much 10 rupees could get you now. 10 rupees, the beggar will turn it back. Yeah, like last time I gave somebody someone a five rupee coin, they might have five rupees. No, I mean, yeah, not, not a measly amount. I mean, I understand it is things are mm. so they are very, very preferential nowadays. Yeah, but no one wants to work. Oh, yeah, no one wants to work. I heard want the money to go up. I heard the the transgender folks at the uh, uh, you know stops they earn up to a lakh a month from begging. Uh -huh. It is true, and it's tax free. And <laughs> some of them oh, earn I'm eight. Not required for that, no. <laughs> some of them have form number, God knows what. <laughs> Someone said they are doing a study, so I was talking to them. They said some people earn eight lakhs a month. Wow. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> well, that's wow. living off people's insecurities. Huh? I mean, we as a culture have certain insecurities around transgenders, and that's why, or not insecurities or preconceived, I won't say insecurities, it's mostly our um, mindset, or whatever you were raised with, or some people are raised with. It, it, I'm not to judge, but that's what's probably aiding their cause. And they don't want education. I mean, the, the I study was that. Really? <laughs> study was that. <laughs> Can we have, there's a policy that allows free education for them in universities. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. In 2020. So the study was on the implementation when they found out how much they're earning and why they don't want to come to university. <laughs> oh, wow. My goodness. And you know, I mean, it has been beliefs from the past, what I have been seeing around is like, like you know, if, 
if a, it, it's a transgender and they're asking you money, people generally would give, you know. Yeah. It's very hard, you know, they will say no. So, of course, to others probably we will shoo away and, uh, you know, but when they are there, we, we go and we say, okay, no, because, you know, then parents would say, oh, this will happen, that will happen. Yeah, because it's, yeah, they're like, yeah. You do that. yeah. It's not your condition, it's what you were told, yeah. Yeah. Very true. Okay, so I'm going to, we have about 20 minutes left. Yeah. Let's see how many we can illustrate. Even if we can't paint them, we'll paint it next time. But let's try and illustrate what we can. Okay. I'm going in directly with pen. Don't worry. Okay. Just keep your proportions. Keep in mind before drawing how roughly how large you'd like to go. That much keep in mind. And then just start. Okay. So if it's, it's when we don't plan how big we want that we end up drawing, letting the dra line drag too long and not turn in the right places. So I'm going to go with this size. I want my, I don't want my samosa to go over this size. So I'm going to keep that in mind while trying to sketch out this, this samosa here. And behind this, I'd like to draw one more samosa, but that's going to kind of, it's going to kind of disappear behind this line. So I will stop at some point, okay? That's it. And it's going to have, I'm going to leave it that way. Now, samosa will have a chili or chutney. We said we want some chutney. So if that's the case, I'm going to draw a, a bowl. We'll color that uh, green or red according to what we want a little later. I will definitely, uh, okay, let's leave this. Next, I would like to illustrate a dokla. Where is my dokla? Now, dokla, when you're illustrating, because it is a softer uh, substance, let's try and keep it um, a, a broken line. Okay, what I mean by broken line is, we're going to draw it mostly like a cube. And many of us have drawn cubes before. But let's not draw the cube um, in fixed lines, in straight lines. Let's draw it a little wavering. So my dokla here okay, is going to be here like this. I'm drawing a sort of a wavy line. Okay. Let the part going down like this. Slightly inward, outward, gives it that that uh, soft, uh, fluffy texture. Now with dokla, what happens is there is sometimes a little bit of coconut. Okay, you might want to just mark these coconut pieces out so that when you're adding water, uh, sorry, watercolor, you don't cover those. Leave the white as it is. Okay, so leave those um, little pieces. Of coconut and also draw leafy pieces so that you can paint them green. So that's your dokla. Dokla, let's have an overlapping dokla as well. One that comes from this side. You got the idea of a dokla? Now, once you've got an idea, remember you, can, you don't have to stick to the reference. You can deviate. 
तो दोन भी वैलिड है one more thing that in a dokla that we um, can do at this point is put in the rye the mustard because we are using a black liner there is no harm in drawing in the mustard piece okay so dokla is done vada pav where do we fit the vada pav yo we try here or here what shall we do here if we don't uh... <coughs> medu vada hmm. there is medu vada and there's okay let the medu vada kind of overlap with this banner okay let's put it here and let's put our uh, vada pav here okay we will try and illustrate the vada pav oh we have bajia also dokl i mean pakoda also Ooh. okay great Let's have pakodas on this side, okay? Like squiggles down here on this side. So I was wondering what we would fit over because nothing big and broad will fit here. So pakoda is a great for having on the side. Let's do that, okay? So where was I? Why was that the vada pav? There's my vada pav. Yeah. So for vada pav, I'm going to. Now the top of the pow, I'm actually uh, leaving it at a straight line. But where the where the crust and the soft part of the pow meet, I'm going to make, put in a wavy line. And it's going to kind of overlap with a lot of things. Let me see. Almost overlapping with my letter. Chili is definitely required. So we can add in the chili on this side. No vada pav uh, is complete without. A chili or two. Okay. Now we want the pora. Pakodas are a very oddly shaped uh, item. Don't let that overwhelm you. Draw the shapes that you can see. So there are these squiggles. And uh, you may feel like, oh, it's not looking really like a pakoda when you look at the illustration. But it looks like something like a walnut to me. But when we add the color, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a few deeper shades here and there that make it look more realistic. Okay. Right now, just draw a few lines that would indicate uh, the onion rings itself. Okay. So this is one. Now another thing with pakoda is it sometimes has these little edges sticking out, you know, like end of the onion piece sticking out. Show those, show those ends. It's very important. So one little piece sticking out, one little odd shape sticking out somewhere. And sometimes you even have an entire piece of onion sticking out like this, you know, and do that.
ओके पकोड़ा गरम we left it now medu vada so now medu vada i am going to have to paint the uh, draw the leaf at the bottom base yeah and the leaf at the base okay let me draw the medu vada first now in the medu vada this curve here is going to be important the curve that's facing you okay uh, draw that curve in good let me draw it what looks like this It's like a donut, very similar if you draw a donut. Except that in a donut, you may have smoother edges with a meduada. Let the edges be crooked. Okay. And in fact, at certain places, you may even want to draw like these little embellishments, which we'll color in later. Basically, it's all the padipata, all the stuff that uh, hides in a meduada. You can put those marks in. Okay. So meduada is there. Now, to offset that meduada, we said we'll put a uh, leaf. Uh, before we put the leaf, okay, how do we put the leaf? Let me just plant this with a pencil. A leaf can be half a leaf, okay? So I've seen a lot of these, um, yeah, most of them are half leaves. Basically, the striations of the banana leaf do not um, this way, okay? And we have a middle line here for the banana leaf to start and then only the one half of that leaf is going to show here. Like okay. So draw a rectangular-ish. I'm very, uh, be, be very free with that uh, shape. Because huh? it's not a perfect rectangle. It's wavy. And then draw this middle line. This is another nice way to show, indicate the middle portion of a banana leaf. And then just thin lines, wavy lines because it changes according to the shape of the leaf. Okay. To show the uh, veins of the banana leaf. Okay. That should do it. So I think one, two, three, four, five snacks. Done? We can add more. Huh? Don't worry about this. We, there may be some spaces where we have to do something. Let's do a uh, chai first. Now, chai and coffee, it is the tumblers that make a world of a difference. In a chai, it is the glass tumbler. And for a coffee, it is the um, the metal, metal tumbler that uh, will catch the fancy. So let's start with maybe having a chai here. Okay, at the bottom because my tumbler will fit here nicely. Just like overlapping with the sweet. Sweet part we're going to leave here for kulfi. Kulfi ko either rakte hai. We'll just make our chai ka glass. Chai ka glass, if you don't fit the whole glass, don't worry. Fit what you can. So chai ka glass is going to be this way. Now the rim is nice huh, to have. You must show this rim because this is glass. So having a rim like this indicates the thickness of your glass. And then the rest of your glass is going to sit a little bit thinner than this. Just a wee bit off from the top. Okay. Comes down. Now, the next thing to notice is at the base, no, again, you have a thickness. You have a slight thickness at the base and you want to show that thickness, okay? So, the while the bottom of your 
cup will be somewhat like this. Above it, you will have a little bit of a curvy line. See? A curvy line. Can you? I'm not sure if this is visible, but let me just go closer so you can see. See the curve? The groove? Okay? These grooves are important. Why? Because we are going to have to draw some vertical lines. On one side of the groove is enough. So let me take this line up. This line sideways. This line up. This one goes sideways. And you'll get it. Okay. So the grooves have come in. And now the chai. Chai is a little frothy. So remember to make it uneven, dotted lines, kind of. And over here, also dotted lines. Sometimes you have bigger, like bubbles. You can show those bubbles in ink itself. The rest we will do in color. Then we have uh, filter copy. Filter coffee is yes. Filter coffee is going to be here. This is going to be a little tricky. So the angle of this filter coffee is a little more upward. Okay. We could look for another one which has a better angle, but even if you don't, the concept is the same. We put an outer cover, outer and an inner. And then there is this downward slope. Okay. And then you have the outer, um, the second uh, vessel, which is going to be closer here and broader on the other side. See, this part has to be quite close. Okay. This has got a rim and it's a fatter rim which becomes fatter when it comes closer to you. So remember that. Thinner on the, on, on the top part, but thicker on this side. And this too will have a depth, but not too much, very little. Because that's all you want to show. Now with this coffee that we see here, it has lots of little, little bubbles. We can put just the big ones and leave the rest for when we are coloring. Or we can just put in as many little ones as, as you like. The whole point is we will put a wash later on and darken these bubbles a little bit. And then we get that effect of chai. Okay. So chai and what are we left with now? Green tea. Now, green tea, I purposely put this glass um, uh, example because um, it is often served in a glass and we can show the color better. Okay. So, green tea. Are we up at our level? Okay. Almost last, probably just the green tea and the kulfi and we'll stop. Okay. So, green tea. Uh, I'm just considering putting this uh, mug handle on the other side. So if we want to overlap our mug here, like this. Again, this is glass, so put an inner lining. Draw the shape of the mug a little bit, starting from the end here, and a little bit over here. Okay. Then let us swap the handle. Okay, we are swapping the handle to the other side. Concept is exactly the same. Keep everything you see exactly as is until you come here and joins here. A slight molding for where it is joining. And that's it. And then you can draw the rest of your cup. Okay. The 
because this is glass, remember that we have to maintain this thickness that we are showing on the top. We have to maintain it along the side also a little bit. So remember to just leave a little bit. You don't may not see it in the picture, but remember to leave a slight, uh, slight mark so that you don't paint the whole thing green. All right, let me just draw the level of the liquid. Now for green tea, if you feel you want to put a leaf in it, I don't mind it. Uh, you can put one inside. Just to show a leaf. Or, con I mean, conversely, you can put a um, mint leaf on the outside. You know, mint leaves are like this. A little bit curvy. Okay. Pudina ka leaves. They look nice outside also. For the chai, you could leave a little adrak sticking out on this side. So let's look at a picture of adrak. Adrak is basically a very misshapen item. It has all sorts of funny shapes on it. So I'm going to leave an adrak over there. Yeah, beverage is done. And we go on to kulfi. Kulfi is rather straightforward. So we'll draw one here. Just make sure that you have a conical looking kulfi. That's important. It has to taper slightly and widen as it reaches the end. Now here you will notice that I'm not following the exact uh, proportion that is shown in the picture. The picture is looking from a topward angle, but you get the you get the uh, shape, right? The shape is rather evident. This way. And that's it. Kulfi ke liye, remember, we have to have these pieces because this makes all the difference. Small pieces, big pieces, they really make a difference. And if you want to put a thread of saffron sticking out, that is also perfectly fine. One kulfi may not be enough, so you can put in two, one behind. And this could be uh, at an angle. Uh, or maybe even a little further. But roughly, we want to maintain the shape. Huh? We want to maintain the shape and the size. Don't make the kulfi at the back bigger than the kulfi in the front. It's a perspective thing. Yeah. Done. Okay. So the gaps left in our picture are here. This is where we could do something more, right? So any ideas on what, what we could do to fill in stuff over here? Shall we introduce something that, uh, or shall we bring in some bajiyas here? Or do you, would you like uh, chutneys? Should we try some? But it is going to be a bit tricky. Why? Because this is not going to be foreground. This is going to be in front. So whatever is in front, we are going to have to draw it in this space without touching our samosa. If it touches the samosa, we are going to have the samosa line overlapping and then this whole placement is going to go off. So maybe we could just bring in some, uh, one more dokla maybe. Okay. This is a good option. Modokla and some bajiyas.
you've made any mistakes, don't worry. Okay, this is this is something that you have to. Um, we we will have to get used to. Mistakes will happen. Now, what we can do here, we can put a little bit of chutney. Okay, like a spattering of chutney. If we are doing this in red, making it let's say ketchup, we could make this green. So we can have two different ones. And the medwada, anyway, we have not put a chutney over there. We could leave the medwada as it is. It seems okay. It's a very, very fine line deciding what to put in and what not to put in. Okay. We'll stop here for today and do the painting next time. Okay. We'll finish off the painting next time. And, and. This was something that Alka and I were discussing last time. We could consider doing this is what even Elaine was asking for in the Tuesday batch. She was asking how about we do something similar on a chalkboard. You know, a lot of people have chalkboard menus outside restaurants and things like that. Okay. So we can uh, consider doing this as a chalkboard menu. Something similar. Not so elaborate. Maybe a little less elaborate. But with a chalkboard menu, what is going to happen is first you're going to have a black paper instead of uh, we'll we'll be doing our exercise on a black sheet of paper. So if you can arrange for either a black paper or even other options like uh, the back of your Amazon box is brown, you know, like brown paper, Amazon uh, bags, the back of those brown paper, gray paper, any of those darker shades of paper on which a white jelly roll pen. Uh, does everyone have a white jelly roll? Yeah. Okay. So just check your jelly roll pens because these things dry up very fast. Huh? Mind you. Uh, they're no fun to keep. They are only fun to use. <laughs> so just check out your jelly roll pen. Make sure that they are working quite smoothly. Uh, and next class, what we can do is after we, we paint this in, let's try a very quick illustration on a black or a dark paper with white jelly roll pens. Okay? Let's try a quick menu illustration. And that time we probably won't put the prizes and things like that. We'll just have items, a few items. Okay? And we'll illustrate, maybe what we could do is we could illustrate some veggies. Now, what we've done here is we've illustrated end products, actual item itself. We could consider doing a veggie illustration. Suppose we do a, a menu for salads. If you're doing a menu for salads, you don't want to show the end product salad because I can't see whether you put pieces of, uh, you know, what pieces have gone into the salad. Instead, for a salad menu, what we would be actually doing is drawing only the raw, raw material. So your uh, tomatoes, your onions, your cucumber, all those things. Okay. So we could consider doing a salad menu as a, a chalkboard illustration. Okay. So let's do that next class. Let's, let's finish this off, painting this off. And as soon as this is done, we'll take that A5 size is enough. If you don't have a full A4 sheet of black or brown or gray or whatever, it's fine. A5 is more than enough. And on that, let's take the white jelly roll pen and uh, make a menu. Only white, no other color. Okay? Sounds good? Yeah. And if you have any ideas uh, on uh, what you want to cover, I was thinking of um, of salads, but if you think of something better, let me know. Just remember that it is going to be a, a monotone illustration. It is yeah. not going to have color. Today's this is going to be very colorful and lovely, but that has its own charm, just black and yeah, I could do more Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I hope your pages are looking nice already. We yes. will. Uh, let's. Oh, one minute, one minute. Yeah, interesting. Very curious. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Very lovely, Ritika. Yeah, I really like the. Oh, nice. I'll come. Super, super. It's looking nice, no? Yeah. yeah. But uh, case little... became a little narrow, so I put them one oh, below nice. the other. Nice, Malika. Yeah. Oh, nice. nice. Very nice. Very nice. Super, super. So next time what we'll do is, now what you can do is if you have your, uh, uh, this thing, what do you call it? Uh, if you have your uh, kneadable eraser at home, please go ahead and rub the kneadable eraser over this illustration. Because we are done with all the illustrations that we need to do with a pen. <coughs> <clears throat> just go over a needle with it with a needable eraser so that these lines that we've marked all go up okay without hampering too much of our uh, Malika you know how to use a needable eraser 
you do know okay take care now the reason being i don't have an irrigation irrigation here in kerala so what i'm going to have to do is i'll have to go and see if i can buy one if i don't have one then i'll have to just use a normal irrigation so i'm not irrigating right now i'll raise during the week if i get time to get a needable irrigation but a needable would be best so that uh, it doesn't ruin the paper okay one run and uh, then i will we will color it in next time with water okay all right thank you good night thank you by the way i never stop to take a breath and ask anybody if you have questions <laughs> <laughs> i confidently assumed everybody is calling nice and proper i think it was nice to just wing it it's okay to just like yeah. be okay with mistakes or whatever correct so. correct That's what I love about illustrations like this. Sometimes it's good, of course, to have perfect illustrations, but to make it very real, good, good. So next Saturday, yes. right? This time? Yeah. Yes. See you. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Have a nice weekend. You too. Bye. 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 bye.